And today, dress up your wardrobe with sexy accessories, and you don't have to spend a lot to do it. Heat up your love life with Surefire Ways to Light His Fire. Woo! And Kirk Douglas comes home. He has a gift for all of you. Good morning. It's the 1st of October. Let's hear it for Jerry Collins and Sarah Purcell. Hi, everybody. Welcome home. Well, there's a good reason for this, because I want you to look behind us. These folks are all cutting out the home heart test that we'll be taking tomorrow when we're at the Arizona Heart Institute, and it's in the paper today. That's right. It's in the life section of USA Today, uh, page 3D. Mm -hmm. So if you want to take the heart test today, mm -hmm. tomorrow we're going to give you the results because we're going to come to you live from the Arizona Heart Institute. Yeah, now, what we thought might be a nice idea, and I don't want to start this on a downer, but heart disease is the number one cause of death for women. But the point it's here amazing. is that what you do today will affect profoundly your health in future years. That's right. So That's not right. only you, but if you know of someone that might be at risk, maybe she smokes, maybe she's overweight, maybe she's got poor eating habits, call her up and say, watch this. It could save your life. Or maybe have a coffee class. Get a bunch little, of people over. That's right. Huh? And get together because a little support is always good. If you Absolutely. Have, if you have to change a lifestyle or eating habit, this is the time to do it. Okay. It does make a difference. And right now, how about a new wardrobe? Well, if you can't afford it, and most of us can't, just dress up the old one with some sexy new accessories. See here, I got accessorized today. Gary has just the thing. Gary? Thanks, Sarah. You know, we talk a lot about accessories here on home, but have you ever noticed that you can give two women the same accessories and they'll look entirely different? Let's find out why from fashion director of Monet Jewelers, Linda Barilla. Good morning, Linda. Good morning. How are you? Good why is it? accessories can really get tremendous mileage from your jewelry wardrobe. Also, it's very important is face shape. Because you know how cosmetics, you can create a, a jawline or a cheekbone or mm -hmm. dramatize an eyes? Well, earrings can complement or change your face. And the first thing to remember is that opposites attract. Okay, well, we're going to examine, we're gonna what, examine four, different, four types. different face shapes and talk about how earrings and accessories can change their total look. Alright, well let's get started with okay. number one. Our first model is Monica. And Monica has an oval face shape. Now, she really has the perfect face because there's no distinct jawline, no distinct features. So any type of earring can really go with Monica. Mm -hmm. But we've, what we've selected for Monica, because she has a very hey. active, isn't that great, active lifestyle, is some wonderful, simple, gold, poop earrings. And we wanted to give Monica really more of a casual, chic look. So we selected a great cap, you know, a great red cap. This is great with denim. And we've added some scatter pins because they provide a little wit and whimsy to the fall fashion season. Also, we've added a cluster of scatter pins onto the lapel of her denim jacket. Lots of western wear and uh, motifs are great for denim jackets with a cacti, boots and hats. And the finishing touch, we've added lots of bangle bracelets to her wrist to really create a total fashion look and a wonderful bandana in lieu of a belt and a great link bracelet to finish the total look casual chic. Mm -hmm. Doesn't she look fabulous? Yes, she does. Great stuff. Okay, here's number two. Our next model is Rachel. Now, Rachel has a heart-shaped face. Yeah. Because opposites attract, mm -hmm. you want to soften here the angles of her face, but also to add some width to the jawline. Ah. So what we did with Rachel is we added some teardrop earrings, which are a little wider at the base, and really creates that width of the jawline that she needs. Yeah. But Rachel also wanted a very chic look for that afternoon lunch, or the great weekend look that she wants for that sophisticated chic. And she also wanted to create a slimming effect. So we added longer length necklaces in jet and crystal oh, so and that's pearl. What you do. What a it great draws idea. the yeah. eye downward, creates a slimming effect. Isn't that fabulous? You're adding a whole torsion of them. Yeah. And instead of using a scarf around the neck because her neck is a little short, we draped it over the shoulder and just created that total vertical look, creating a fabulous chic but a very slimming effect for Rachel. Thanks, Rachel. Our next model is Lupe. And Loopy has a very square face, and because you want to soften the angles of the face, you mm -hmm. want to select earrings that are rounded or softer edge. Loopy also wanted more of a fashion forward look. Yeah. So what we did is for Loopy, we selected very rounded sculptural earrings in silver, because silver and red is a great look instead of just silver and go, uh, with uh, black, but right. red is a great fashion uh -huh. look. Soften the angles of her face, 
wonderful sculptural necklace to fill in the neckline instead of a scarf and really bring attention up and away from the face. And finally, we added some wonderful silver bangles at the wrist to complete her look. It's really fashion forward, very dramatic for fall. Good luck, Ruthie. Thank, Thank you. Great. Now, who and is this? And our fourth model is Karen. Oh, boy. And Karen has a long, <laughs> narrow face. And what we want to do is make the face appear a little wider, not too much wider. No, you've really succeeded. Right. Hold on so to your hat. Right look at Yo. that. We wanted to create a sensational, simple, stunning look for Karen. So we selected large uh, circular earrings in jet and crystal. And we've added a wonderful bib-like necklace in jet and crystal that really creates drama. You could take a simple black dress and really go from day to evening with ease. And with another great tip, if we take a look at her shoes, what we've done is we've taken a simple pair of pumps and added clip opulent clip-on yeah. earrings onto the front of the pump. Clip-on earrings? Clip-on earrings. Great idea. Not just for your ears anymore. Uh -huh. Go to day to evening, office to evening with ease. Simple black dress, perfect for dressing up or dressing down with jewelry. And I gotta tell you, you've achieved it. Doesn't great that look, look great? Brother. Yeah, terrific. It's a great way. You can just use accessories in fun, fashionable ways. Yeah. It's just a great way to get mileage, a wallet smart way to get okay. mileage from your wardrobe. Linda Briella, thank you very much thank for Thank you. Being it's with been us. a pleasure. And thanks for taking a look at this thank four you. famous face. They look terrific. Great. And thank you, ladies. Next up, a money saving do it yourself tip that will really floor you. One of my favorite things, handyman Carl Mueller is here today for all of you do-it-yourselfers, okay? We have a letter, and uh, this letter is from Tiffany Husband of Coeur d'Alene. Uh, her name really is Tiffany Husband right. from Coeur d'Alene, Idaho. Now, this is what happened to Tiffany, and I can relate to this. She says, I dropped a frozen chicken on my kitchen floor, and it ripped the linoleum. <laughs> Can I save money and fix the rip myself? When those frozen chickens hit the floor, you got to stand back real quick. So yeah, I, it, it, it hit the floor and not your foot, Tiffany. Good for you. Yeah. Quick uh, on her feet. Yes, we can fix it. Can we fix Tiffany? this? Uh, we, can, we can save the day. So right. here's what you do. You, got you happen your... to know that Tiffany does not have the one-sheet linoleum floor. This is the... Uh... Well, actually, this is one sheet. It's just in that pattern. A little square, oh, you see? Is. So like what you're talking about, if you have tiles, you just take up the individual tile that's been broken or ripped or torn uh -huh. or, or chickened in this case. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah. So, but if you have like an interesting pattern on there, what you have to do is cut out along the lines of a pattern. So here's the tear, uh -huh. and in this case, it's nice squares. So you take a razor knife okay. and you cut along here. Okay? Now, where do you get this extra square? Well, I don't think I've ever gotten any extra squares. That's a very before. good question. I'm yeah. glad you asked that. Yeah. <laughs> uh, it's, Aren't you? you? Yeah. <laughs> what, if you can't find it in the store, right, yeah. you look under the refrigerator or under the dishwasher. And there it is, linoleum that will never be seen. And if you're not going to move your dishwasher or your uh, refrigerator, then get a piece out of there. Will there be any uh, color difference if it's under the refrigerator? There might be. Just after you get the yeah. dust bunnies off. There. Right, you get you clean it up. It's going to be nice new stuff. And if, um, well, all, right. all right, let me. I got to do that. <laughs> you can I get carried away. Am with I linoleum. distracting you, yes. Carl? Yes, and okay. someone's going to get. Okay, all right. So you make your cut here, nice straight cut. Okay, and you use this as a template. Okay. Okay. Then you take. I love it when you use those big words. Use template. the big words and a lot of torque. Okay. Then you take. You take. You take your. Uh, it's your those men what's words. this called? Aluminum foil uh -huh. and a hot iron and you iron over the spot. Now what that is doing is melting the glue underneath, okay? Oh. So you, you let that melt, All right. okay? Put that away. Oh. Then you take a putty knife and you start prying up, uh -huh. okay? See how that starts to come up like that? Oh. Now if you have it, if it's hard to come up in certain places, then cut strips and just tear it all out of there, but don't okay. hurt the edges around. Yeah. And what Very you'll careful. be left with will be this, which uh -huh. is the old adhesive underneath. See how that's been spread on? Right. Then you take some of this adhesive remover which bubbles up. You want to use gloves. I'm not because it doesn't matter what happens to my hands. <laughs> They're all banged <laughs> you're up. You're the home handyman yeah. and you're a he guy. I'm, I'm a he guy. Uh, okay. okay, so this stuff will start, will start stripping, okay, and start bubbling up and you scrape and you scrape and you scrape and you sand and you sand. You have you to sand. be very careful to get it all up. Get it all up because all right. anything that's left underneath is going to show, okay? okay? So then you take your other piece that you've cut out exactly and you put it in here so it's going to fit and you've got your latex adhesive, uh -huh. which you spread on there with a brush or with a mortar thing, spread it on nice, 
put it in there nice and tight. Then you put a board over that, okay, and uh -huh. something to weight it down. And in your case, Tiffany, a nice frozen chicken on a Frozen chicken, job. let it defrost right on top of that tile. Keep it there for a couple days, and there you go. <laughs> I love it. Thank you very much. You betcha. Good luck, Tiffany. Let us know. Did it work? We'd love, yeah, to, we'd love to hear from you. Obviously, Carl is a great guy to have around when you need to say, honey, do this. Honey, could you do that? And sometime in November, Carl is going to make a honeydew house call. Yeah. Have Carl come to your house. So write him with your fix-it problem and send it to Home Honeydew List, P.O. Box 29904, Hollywood, California, 90029. Our home honeydew list right here. We'll see what we can do to help you out. Okay, thanks, Carl. Thanks, Carl. Thank you very much. Get that frozen chicken off right. your foot. <laughs> Don't play with chickens in your kitchen. <laughs> and now here's Gary with our home gardener, uh, Keely Shea Smith. I don't know if we let if we let Carl out of here, will we ever get him back? Hey, here's a smooth idea. If I ever heard one, you can make your own hand lotion with things you just find in your garden. And Keely has a secret. That's Good morning. Right. And in the kitchen too. Yeah. That's right. We're making a rose hand cream today mm. out of a floral water and just smell how beautiful that mm -hmm. is isn't that nice you make this? on your hand i made that last night right generally i get kitchen. this in the car as we're driving somewhere marianne has a little tube and she'll put some on her hands why is it you always put too much on and you say honey give me your hand and wipe it off right, yeah. wipe it off actually an old english gardener taught me how to make this some years ago and it's so simple that all you need are really three things. You want to use a good quality vegetable glycerin, which you can find yeah. at any drugstore, a rose water, and cornstarch. And then our active ingredient, or secret ingredient in this case, would be a rose attar oil. And this is just a pure essence of rose that you mm. can find at any health food store. Mm -hmm. Now that has a very heavy fragrance yeah. because we used about four drops of the rose attar. Just, but this is much lighter. Oh, can you I, smell the difference? Oh, I keep getting my nose He's in got it. quite a lot on yeah. now. <laughs> Yeah, that's not as strong. So you use less than this? Yeah, lighter. Oh, okay. So for those of you women who like good. a lighter fragrance mm -hmm. and a lighter cream, you'll use less of the rose water. So here's our recipe, and you can follow along as we make it. We've got one cup of the rose water that we're going to put into a double boiler. Mm -hmm. We've got one teaspoon of glycerin. And you'll right. pour that right in, again, with a heated pan. This is a double boiler. And two tablespoons of cornstarch. So you'll put it all together and then you'll start to stir. And this is one of those recipes that really needs to be stirred for about two and a half minutes. Okay. And now, as is this something you have to adjust? Because I notice this stuff is not going into my hands. I've reached the saturation point with this oil. Did you put a lot on? or? Well, I put a little bit on. Well, yeah. you know what this is? This so, is a very deep moisturizing cream. If you want it to be... Oh, great. Sell me on this. Stuff. If you want it... Well, my hands want to stick together. Well, Try this, Gary. If you want it to be a little lighter, then what you would do is Don't add... Don't use as much what? You would use, use a little oil. less glycerin okay. and a little more rose right. water. And the way that you can control the consistency yeah. is by using a blender. Oh. So that's actually a good question that you asked because once this starts to um, become thick and coagulate, you can put it into the blender and then you can achieve your okay. desired consistency. And then just let it cool down and put it in your jar. Exactly. Huh? So okay. this will take just a little bit longer. And once it cools, you'll add two to four drops of your rose attar oil. Very okay. simple, Great. depending on how much fragrance well, thanks, you want. Well, and give me your hand, will you? Give me your hand. No. Okay. <laughs> Kill your next. A special gift from Kirk Douglas. Yes. See? Yes. I got too much on. More information about this week's segments, including our recipes, will be in our weekly home newsletter. For a copy, just send $2 to home newsletter, issue number 247. That's 247, P.O. Box 92719, Rochester, New York, 14692. Get rid of it. <laughs> good, I can use it. Yeah, the lotion that smells keeps wonderful. giving, you know what I mean? Oh, but it's nice. Yeah, does it smell good? Yeah, mm. everybody's raving about it here. It mm. really does work. It's really nice to have something that really works that well. Okay. Now, you just had a chance, from what I understand, to talk to one of the tough guys that's oh. also a heart yes, throb indeed. for Kirk women. Yes, Douglas. I mean, one of the best known, best loved actors in the world. I mean, if you saw Spartacus, terrific. And from and that to the good, tormented good Vincent Van Gogh too, you know? in Lust for Life, he's got four <laughs> very creative, successful sons. He's been making his mark, though, as a writer of late. And recently I talked to him about his life, his work, his family. I dropped by his Beverly Hills home. Hey, Gary, this is my little cubby hole. Oh, my. As you can see, I'm a big fan of Chagall. And here, <laughs> this is all the scripts that I've done going to that pile there. You count them, you'll find there's 80 of them. That's your career. And these are all 
novels, books that I've read. Yeah, well, this is where I work. Yes. This and is where I work in longhand. Yeah. You know what? I really scribble. You know, usually you write. I, I usually have a thought and I scribble it. I, I, I write it right out. Mm -hmm. And it's like I see it in my mind. You know, I've asked other writers how they write. They usually organize things, they plot everything out. I have an idea and then I start to put it together like a. So it's, it's, a, it's a mystery to me. It's no longer a mystery that Kirk's newest novel, The Gift, is set in Portugal. Against the dramatic backdrop of the bullfighting ring, Miguel, the hero, loses his leg in a tragic accident. Kirk's inspiration was a real-life hero, triathlon champion, Jim McLaren. He said something to me, Gary, that just shocked me. He said, Kirk, if somebody told me I could have my leg back, I wouldn't want it. What do you mean, Jim? Kirk, what has happened to me from this accident has had such an effect on me and changed me as a person. He says that I wouldn't, I, I appreciate that much that I feel the accident was a gift. And that's your title. Exactly. But you know, then I began to think, I had a helicopter crash. Yeah. Two people were killed. When I was lying in the hospital, I felt very guilty. Why was I spared? Well, I know what Jim means. When something happens, if you treat it in the right way, it can become a gift. It can become something that changes you as a person. I know the accident with the helicopter crash had a big impact on me, so I can begin to understand what this accident that Jim McLaren mm -hmm. did to him. All right, that's the physical aspect. Let's move on now to the emotional, the psychological. Miguel says in the book, he says, when my father entered the ring, it was like he came from heaven, and all my life, all I wanted to do was equal my father, and he said, I almost succeeded. Now let's go to, I don't know when your son Michael said this to the New York Times, but he said, I grew up, there's my father, he's a gladiator. He was crucified on a cross. <laughs> How am I ever gonna measure up to that? Gary, I have always told my kids that they have not had my advantages. Because I've had the advantage of coming from abject poverty. That meant I had nowhere to go but up. I've said, hey, Michael, he's, my old man was a, a rich movie star, and I saw, you know, Sinatra, Peck, and these different people coming up, Rolls Royces. I don't know, what would I have been? The fact that my kids have been brought up in a certain amount of affluence, a certain amount of exposure to glamour, or whatever you call it, and still have the desire to do something, I think is a, biggest, a bigger credit to them than whatever I've done in life. I think they have overcome obstacles that I think are much more difficult. When Kirk was a kid, he looked to his father for approval. Now he looks to Anne, his wife of 38 years. When I finished the gift, before I published it, I gave her the manuscript. I said, would you like to read it? Yeah, she read it. Now, usually my wife reads, she read Ragman's son. Yeah, very, very interesting. Read right, Dance with the Devil. Said, yeah, very interesting. I gave her the gift. For the first time, she put it in front of my door. She said, A plus. Hey, I don't know if you know oh, Anne. Well, yes. no, that's a hell of a pat on the back. And I'm a guy that wrote a whole, my whole biography was all about the fact that I didn't get the pat on the back from my father. So I now begin to understand what that pat on the back meant for my wife. What do you think your greatest uh, accomplishment's been? All of us have different ideas. I've about... made 80 films. Yeah. I have all my books lined up in my study, my scripts, and sometimes I look and I think, my God, geez, did I do all that? But now, you know, movies, I don't know, it seemed like a foreign feel to me. I, I think the only movie that I'd really like to do, and Michael, again, Michael and I have been talking about it for a couple of years, of doing a movie together. That would excite me. Otherwise, I'm so excited, Gary, and so surprised that I can write a novel, that people buy it and tell me they like it. I said, really? <laughs> That's wonderful. It was such fun. I think his favorite movie of all time that he's done is a little film, a low-budget thing called Lonely of the Brave, in which it's set in modern day, but he and a horse takes off for the hills, and it's this kind of modern posse with all the electronic gear trying to capture him. He's just kind of a throwback. The other thing I really loved, his big pal was John Wayne. And I said, you know, the girls at the office have all read The Gift, and they say, you write such sexy passages. What do you think your pal John Wayne would say about that? He'd say, Kirk. We're tough guys. We're not supposed to do that sissy stuff. <laughs> <laughs> but I'll tell you, the Aww. book is really quite, quite nice and quite interesting. What I a think nice interview, it. too. Yeah, Very he's a great good. guy. Yeah, thanks for bringing that to us. Next, some surefire ways to light his fire. We lit mm -hmm. her fire yesterday. Tomorrow.
tomorrow, take the home heart test for women. It could save your life. And later today, Santa Claus gives you a head start on your Christmas presents. Our next guest, Ellen Kreidman, has written this book, Light His Fire. Now, yesterday we talked about lighting her fire. We, we dealt with the men. Today we're going to deal with the women. It's the women's turn. And I think so many times women will say, light his fire. His fire is lit. His pilot light is on. Or I want to light him on fire, not light his fire. Exactly. <laughs> Now, what is it? Women really want more romance in their lives. Yes. Women do, and romance to a woman is so much different than it is to a man. You see, women want that emotional fulfillment, and then they can respond sexually. Men need the physical fulfillment in order to respond emotionally. So for, you know, when you look at the list of things that I have, for the man to be turned on, they're very physical. These are things that women can do, keeping in mind that, you know, most women get complimented every day about what they look like, you know, and, uh -huh. and how beautiful they are. Most men, if you ask them, it's been 20 years since they've received a compliment. And you, know, you ask any woman if she walked by a group of construction workers and they were whistling, she would be so upset. But ask any man if he wanted to walk by a group of women, let's say, in a beauty salon, and they were going to whistle, he'd probably say, heck, ladies, what time would be convenient for you? <laughs> you know, because they're yeah. starving for compliments. So notice your man. That's one of the most important things that I can talk about. That's also one of the things you talk about in the book is why men have affairs. It's because yeah. the other woman makes them feel better about yes. themselves. A man falls in love because of the way he feels about himself when he's with you. And when he doesn't feel good anymore, he's going to find another woman that he feels good about himself with. That's what an affair is about. It is not about getting prettier and losing weight and becoming more intelligent. It's how does that other human being feel about himself when he's in your presence. That is so profound. It's very powerful it because is. we keep thinking, how can I be, you know, more exciting? It isn't about you. You know, it's not about me, but how does my husband make me feel about myself? And it's not about me, but how do I make him feel about himself? Now, one of the things you talk about also in the book is using pet names. Yes. What is pet yeah. name? What is that? Why well, is that important? Do you have a pet name for your husband? <laughs> does Love Muffin count? <laughs> oh, that's wonderful. That's an A plus. <laughs> LM Love that's Muffin. Great. That's great. <laughs> you know, but I, I'll tell you something. Inside every man, no matter how strong, powerful, successful, there's a little boy that's waiting to come out and play. And the woman that can provide that playground becomes indispensable in his life. And baby talk and pet names is an intimate way of relating. It's reserved for lovers. And it's something that you should carry out throughout your whole married life. Okay. <laughs> Gare. Stud Muffin. Uh, Stud Muffin up there. That's been a name I've called him, Hunkerama. Okay, You're I'm with Michelle. With and Michelle, do you have a pet name that your husband calls you? Snuggle Bunny. Snuggle Bunny. Oh. This is great. And what do you call him? We call each other Snuggle Bunny. Bunny. Snuggle Bunny. Big Snuggle Bunny and Little Snuggle Bunny. Is he here? Is Snuggle Bunny here? No, he's, oh, he's not here. He's working. Snuggle Bunny's working in the Snuggle Bunny factory. <laughs> now, you're... You're due uh, fairly soon, right? Two weeks. Okay. You have a question? Yes, I do. My husband comes home from work, and his favorite way of relaxing is to turn on the TV and watch the news. He can watch headline news eight times in a row and be perfectly happy. What can I do to get him to pay attention to me? Well, he has paid attention to you, as I see, because you have baby snuggle <laughs> yes. bunny. Old, old snuggle bunny's been busy. Yeah, he's been... Um, but I'll tell you what you do. Anticipation is half the fun. Send him a note that, and a bar of soap and tell him how squeaky clean he's going to be. But most important, say, tonight when you come home, we're turning the TV off and you on and have a bubble bath with champagne and maybe some chilled wine waiting for him. Now, Woo! let me ask you something Second about that. Second to watch TV. You know, you talk about dates on Saturday night and, and all of this kind of preamble stuff. What about just surprising him, just opening the shower door and that popping in there? That would be great. Huh? But you know what? When you surprise somebody, they only get two or three seconds of pleasure. Oh. If you send them something that is in advance, a little object that says, you know, keep this bar of soap with you all day long, because it, it, then they can anticipate what's going to happen later, and they get eight hours of pleasure. Uh -huh. Okay. All right. Hope you've helped, Michelle. Thank you. Okay. We talk a lot about uh, wanting romance in our lives, we women, and yet yeah. I think probably on a daily basis we squelch it, maybe without even realizing it. Have you got some ideas of ways that we should watch? Well, how you we know, yes, yeah. We worry about making other people who probably we will never see it later in our life, and we treat them as very special, important. I say to every person out there, before you go to bed at night, when you put your head on that pillow, think about. Have I made the person who means the most to me feel good today? And if you haven't, you owe them twice as much the next day. But it's really complimenting, making them feel special, making them feel like they matter. And it doesn't take a long period of time. It could be a simple I love you call. It can be a simple note that says I'm thinking of you, a fax machine if you want. It just, it's reaching out to that person and saying in the middle of my busy life, I'm thinking about you.
Mm -hmm. And that's that's so important. It is. It and really is. That anticipation yeah. of get, I get to go home, you know. Okay, Gary, do you have another question? Yes, let me see. Have I got a question up here? Yes, stand up. Your name? My name is Tammy Fritz. Okay, Tammy. And my question is, I have a four-month-year-old daughter, mm -hmm. and um, sometimes I'm too tired to be romantic. Uh, do you have any suggestions? All right. Oh, that's, that's great. I can relate tired. To I'm too tired. That, that is a wonderful question. And you know what the answer is? Pretend that you're not tired. You know what? The, the, the mind does not know the difference between real and make-believe. And if I can get you to pretend, just make-believe that you're not tired and put on maybe a beautiful negligee or have a romantic evening plan, and he gets that gleam in his eye and he says, oh my gosh, you went to all this trouble with for me. I love you so much. You won't feel tired after. We think we have to feel something in order to do something beautiful for another person. You don't have to feel anything. And once you do it and they get re you get the reaction, you feel it afterwards. Okay. By the way, do you have pet name for your husband? Um, well, huh? <laughs> sometimes what um, is it? I call him Lovekin. Lovekin. That's so sweet. What does Aww. he call you? Uh, well, we, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Bless your heart. That's so sweet. Thank you. Okay. Gosh. One more t question. Hi, you two. Oh, hi. Your name? Uh, my name's Janet Hind, and yeah. I'm from Granada Hills. Okay, and uh, uh, my name is Gregory. Gregory, nice. To, are you together? Yes. Okay. We are. <laughs> What's your question? Um, well, um, my, <laughs> let me start over. Okay. Um, my um, husband and I both work full time, and uh, we have a brand new baby daughter who's two months old today, and um, we hardly have any time to spend to each spend with each other, and. Uh, I dragged my husband down to the studio today to see if you have any suggestions on what we can do to be more connected. What's his pet name, by the way? His Mini Stud. Huh? Mini Stud. Mini Stud, okay. <laughs> okay, I've got it. I've got it. Doesn't sound like it needs help, We're right? going to get the whole audience in on okay. this one. You have 10 seconds in your busy, busy life. I want you, every time you haven't seen each other for a long extended period of time, you wrap your arms around each other and give each other a 10-second kiss. So let's start the countdown. You guys? Start, begin, 10-second huh? yeah, intimate kiss. All right, here we go. Audience, let's, go. let's help us, huh? Let's start. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Ho! Oh. Okay. Thank you, audience, and thanks for questions. Okay. That's your thank homework you. assignment. That was wonderful. Homework assignment yes, for one week. I want you to do that. You'll never bring put it out of your life again. <laughs> uh, that's a way to get connected, a 10-second kiss. Right. Thank you so oh, thank much, Thank you Ellen. for having me. Good, good. Thank you. Thank you. Next, don't wait till the last minute. Get a head start on your Christmas gifts. <laughs> October at home means it's time to open Carol Duvall's Christmas Corner and the little elf herself <laughs> is here. <laughs> oh, you know, as soon as I put on the red and green this morning and the Santa Claus necklace and the earrings, I, uh, I felt like Well, Christmas. if you want to do special gifts for people at Christmas time, you really have to start now. Otherwise, you'll be tearing your hair out and griping at the kids at Christmas Absolutely. time. Absolutely. <laughs> and, and also the, the women and people who are working on the bazaars. I mean, those things are coming up within the right. next few weeks. So, so anyway, last year, I can't believe it was one year ago today that we showed you a visit to Bronner's Christmas Store, the Aww. world's largest Christmas store in Frankenmuth, Michigan. Well, this year I called them and said, hey, what's new? What's new? Take a look, Sarah, at what's new this Christmas. Is it we, the angels? The little, yeah, look at her. Oh, my goodness. Now, 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 you walk by, you know, and you think, whoa, whoa, whoa. Oh, look at, there's another one. Is she really fluttering her wings? If you happen to walk by and catch this just... <laughs> Now, we caught them on their descent, but they'll uh -huh. sit there on the, on the branches of the tree for, I don't know, 30, 40 seconds, however, whenever they feel like it, then they'll flutter their wings and start back there up again. There we go. Again. Here's one over here. Oh, All right. Oh, there she <laughs> That's really Isn't cute. That and, of course, this fascinates the children. Oh, because and they're... adults, too, I'll tell yeah. you. Yeah. Now, actually, now these, as I say, I got from Bronner's uh, in Frankenmuth, but... Uh, as they told me, this is a new one on the on the market this Christmas, so there will they will be in different Christmas stores and gift shops around the country. Okay. And uh, as far as what's new with Santa Claus, I've been yeah. noticing that what's new is really what's old. They're more old, you know, Father Christmas type oh. things. Uh huh. And uh, in fact, collecting Santa Claus or Father Christmas memorabilia is is quite a fascinating hobby these days. Look at this poster of all the different ones, and look at here's a Father Christmas on this. Christmas ornament painted on silk. Mm -hmm. Here's one in a little. But these are all not the little jolly elf that we think of. Well, he is sort of. 
Uh -huh. It's interesting to see how they change. Now, those are ornaments. This is an ornament. These are figurines. People collect them, and look at they come as tiny as one inch. Oh. That darling, you could hang that around your neck, as a matter of fact. But these are all to buy. We talk about some to do. People okay. are making Santas on. Well, look at this. Can is that you, a cinnamon stick? That is a cinnamon stick, oh as a matter goodness. of fact. That's great. And one of our viewers, um, Jan Koneman, made this one out of, um, uh, well, a quilt, an old yeah. quilt. Now, here's one you can make yourself. This is new on the market, too, from Wimple Street. They have kits that come with enough uh, so that you can make uh, four, three different silly little Santas, like uh -huh. this one here. Is that or Battenberg lace is, you've got it's there? It's Battenberg oh, lace Santa Claus. Isn't that, that funny? Is funny? But let me show you. You can also, of course, just go to your uh, fabric store or your craft store and buy the different items because it calls for each one. They come in four, six, and eight inch uh, sizes. Uh -huh. Two of the stars, and you put them together, right sides out, wrong sides touching because you're not going to turn it right side to, and you stitch around right on the lines until you have just enough space left to stuff it, uh -huh. and then it'll be like this. Then you have uh, like a triangular pie-shaped piece of felt, or you can have any Christmas fabric. Fold this up, stitch it like this. Now, you don't have to turn this right side to at all. Your stitching could be on the outside, and I'll show you why. This one just slips right over two of the stars. In fact, we have one right here, and a little bit of Battenberg lace around there. It looks like King Santa. Sort uh -huh. of. Now, you see, here's that seam, but you're going to cover it up because it just gets folded down like oh, this, uh -huh. and you tack that down, and you put a little, you know, ball. A little pom-pom there pom -pom on the bottom. pom-pom there, there you go. And then, of course, you add all the little extras, like a little ribbon, and the eyes and the nose, and there you have a scent. They'd be yeah. cute, uh, not only on a tree, but on a package or on a shirt. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> you could even personalize it by putting someone's name on the little package. You know, you're getting into this crazy. I know, thing, it's Sarah. rubbing you off. <laughs> so, Merry Christmas. We've got a lot more coming up. Oh, good. All right. <laughs> Thanks, Carol. Next, brighten up your table with buttons, berries, and Bartlett's. <laughs> Bartlett's. I want to stick my hand in this one. Don't you do that. All right. <laughs> Buttons, Bartlett's Berries, and much, much more. That's what we have today from home grocer Curtis Aikens. Good wow. morning. Good How morning. Doing, it's man? good to be home today, guys. Yeah. Let me tell you good something. Good to be anywhere today. You know, it's tough to follow a 10-second kiss, then a Carol Duvall, but I love this show. You know that? Isn't it so much fun? One quick thing before we get into the fairs. Last week, you gave out some information, that, that segment on, uh, on that hyperness, uh, what is it called? Pretension? And I tried to call it. Yeah, yeah. It was so great. So I'm going to tell you and everybody. You blood like, pressure? No, no, the, no. When you're anxiety. Oh, anxiety. I was okay. in the hotel in D.C. and I said, I got to call in. I tried to get in there. But okay. I well, think it was, was about busy. panic attacks. That's it. That's, That's it. Because I was having a you panic attack. Every day. Why? I don't know because I don't have so much fun. Okay. <laughs> Let's do this. Okay. Let's <laughs> All right. get with it. First what are we doing? This is our recap. And I love doing this for you folks at home because we want to keep it in your face, as they say. So when you go to the grocery store, you can be in the produce man's face, a produce person's face, okay? When buying pears, Gary, we talked about pears, all the different types. Here's a new one for you. This is called the Suli. That sucker is big, isn't it? Reminds me of an old country pear that what we grow in. What does it taste like? I have never eaten one. Well, Bear brought this in. I, yeah, let's try, well, let's yeah. try this. This one looks better. And it huh? smells better, too. It smells like a country pear out of, out of grandma's backyard. And I want to show our folks at home, when buying pears, the key thing is to buy what's in season. Pears are still in season, yeah. okay? Okay. Now, when you tell, how does it taste? Great. Is that good? Ooh, wait a minute. Wait a minute. What do you think? Does that remind you of that country? It's almost like an apple oh, in a pear God. together, isn't it? That is fabulous. That the Suli. That is wonderful. I've never eaten that. So, Suli. Suli. Okay, but here we go. When buying pears, make sure you buy what's in season. Then you look at the pear real good. Make sure there's no scars or bruises. And also, the way you tell a pear is ripe is you can press the top. You have that little indentation. It lets you know the pear is ripe, okay? Yeah. They'll keep a couple of days in the refrigerator. Remember, they'll ripen at room te temperature right on top of the counter. Yeah. Well, the next thing we want to cover were berries. We did that wonderful segment on berries. And blueberries, remember we talked about them. That was towards the end of the season. You could have bought them, mm -hmm. freeze them. And if you're like I am, I've got a bunch of them in my freezer at home. Right. For those blueberry pies. And you've got all the newsletters that cover all this stuff. Right. Now, raspberries, blackberries, blueberries. Remember, plumper, the bigger the berry, the better the taste, okay? You see that? Isn't that a beautiful shot there, Gary? Yeah. Okay. One of the things I want you to look for in the grocery store when buying berries is always turn that basket over. You see that moisture there? You see how gooky that is? That's not good. That is not good. Right. This is, we're at the end of the blackberry season. You're going to see a few more raspberries, but blackberries, home viewers, 
do not buy black beers right now, okay? All right, let me, did you go through all the rest oh, of these yes, little things? Okay. This was that wonderful thing. This is oh, that Japanese that, pear apple. That Asian pear, yeah. Yeah, what's it called? Pear. Apple, apple pear, pear or, okay. or, or um, Asian pear, centennial yeah. pear. Gosh, is that good. Those are beautiful. Mm -hmm. That Suli reminds me of that flavor. Right. Then again, this is the sickle pear. That's the Native American pear. One. That is just beautiful. Uh, one of the crew members suggested you may, uh, the pears poached with a little white wine, but just to die for. Okay? Right. So remember our berries. I don't want to see you buying blackberries, but raspberries are cool. Mm -hmm. Okay? The next thing are mushrooms. Um, Sarah and I had a lot of fun with this segment because of the fun guy. Mm -hmm. Remember, mushrooms are in their own family. And when buying mushrooms, folks, I want you at home to really look for the white mushrooms with closed caps, okay? When the caps start to open up like that one, Gary, those are number twos. Uh, in other words, um, they're, they're fine for you to cook with, but you should get a better price on those mushrooms, Gary. See how dark those are coming? Now, I don't want to see you buy Wait mushrooms. Wait a minute. Can you go in there and just negotiate with the supermarket? That's what we really want. I, I really want to see our home viewers do it. When you go to your local grocery store, I don't care what the store is, if you don't see top quality produce, demand a better price. Okay, I that's do it, good and news. Teresa will vouch for me on this. Right. We really do that. If I see lousy produce, I know they throw a lot away. Oh, they throw too much away, yeah. and they don't want to lose money. Mm -hmm. You should get a break on it if they're going to throw this stuff okay. out. But remember now, these are okay at home in your refrigerator. Mm -hmm. They are great for pizzas. They're great for saute. They, they don't have as much moisture, so they, they're wonderful for baking. Yeah. The last thing we want to really recap was the wax on produce. Okay, we talked about the turnips. Uh, the the rutabagas. No idea they and, wax oh, turnips. Too much wax on them. Peel these things before cooking them. Okay. The same yeah. thing with the apples. A little lemon bath and water is a great okay. thing to, to remove the uh, um, wax, wax and other mm -hmm. things that are on, on top of okay. the produce. That is great. Well, yeah. I can't believe it. I got through without a kiss or a hug. Well, so, well I understand you got a patch for that. <laughs> you are so. How's it? How's it? Okay. Next week, Gary. Right, what are we doing right, next week? We got beans. We got some a wonderful okay. recipe for beans for you. And I want to get a jump on everybody else in the country. We're talking about uh, pumpkins. I want our home viewers to know some uh, secret things to do with pumpkins. All right. So Next be week. there. Next Thanks. up, the must-see video rental of the weekend for you and your family. <laughs>
Mutt. I pitched in college. Which at the end, me. there's a little, a, a little bit of um, a, a scary violence. It's not terribly bad, but you know, if your kid is sensitive, you need to hold his hand through it. Uh -huh. uh, it's good for the whole family, and Charles Grodin is great. But have I got a surprise for you, Sarah? You do? Yes, I do. No, this is not it. Oh. Okay. Now, ladies Cutie and gentlemen. Cutie pie. Oh. Beethoven. Oh. Real Beethoven. The real one, the movie star. And he's just about the same age as Colin. He's three, right? Oh my three? goodness! How right. do I get to take him home? Well, no, it, yeah. <laughs> no you've probably got other movies to yeah. do, sequels and things like that. That's right. Well, thank you for coming by to visit, and thank you, Rona. Thank you, Beethoven. We'll be right back after this. Thank Thanks, you, Beethoven. This home parenting segment brought to you by. Carnation Good Start, instant formula made to be gentle. We want you to be a part of our studio audience. If you're planning to be in the Los Angeles area, just write to us or call 213-520-5000. Make sure to tell us what day you'd like to be here and come on home. Don't forget tomorrow we have a one-hour program special from the Arizona Heart Institute. The test, the home heart test is in uh, today's, today's USA, USA Today. Today. Don't right, forget so to take the test. Out. Tomorrow you'll get scored. Okay. okay. Time now for a little shameless plug. Uh, after the heart test tomorrow, Will and I are going to Amory, Mississippi, which is up in the northern part of the state, about two hours from Memphis. We'll be joined by Marianne Mobley. Uh, I wonder why. Debbie <laughs> Allen. That's my main squeeze. Uh -huh. Debbie Allen, uh, Sandy Patty, Gary Grubbs, Dean Butler, Kathy Lee Gifford, we're doing a benefit to raise money for nurse scholarships there in the state in the honor right. of, of Mary Nell Haskell, our good friend Sam Haskell's mom. So if you'd like to come, just con contact the Chamber of Commerce in Amory. That's A-M-O-R-Y. We'd love to see you there. Amory, Mississippi. Yes, indeed. All right. Bye, everybody. All right. We'll see, see you tomorrow, tomorrow from, Arizona. from Arizona. Make it a good day. Have a okay. care. Okay. Thank you. Today, the worst is feared as truckers' condition grows grim. Watch Loving.